Hey guys, it's your girl Yum Yum and I'm coming to you live from the spot. Today we are continuing our series, Is God Real? And we are going to talk about what do we do now that we have seen all these things to know that he's real. But before we get into that, it's your girl Yum Yum. I'm coming to you live from the spot. Welcome to Yum's World. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel like this video and leave a comment in the comment section and share it if it's a blessing. All right guys, let's get into it. <laughs> okay, so today we are continuing in our series. This is part six of Is God Real? We're gonna delve into more detail about now that we've seen the many things and the many different pieces of evidence about how God is real and this list, by the way, guys, is in no way exhaustive. It is just one or two things that testify very loudly that God is real. Now, with that being said, when we know that God is real, what does that even mean? Why, why does that matter? What does that mean to me? How do I interact with this real God? And so I just want to go over a few points that's taken from Genesis chapter 1 again. I really... I just love Genesis chapter one so much in case you haven't noticed. So we're just gonna look at a couple of things to tell us if God is real, then how do we interact? And these couple of points kind of explain that very nicely. The first verse of Genesis one says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And what I wanna pull out there is in the beginning, God. So at the beginning of the world and of creation, God was there. And that sets the tone and it sets the stage for everything that happens after that. If God was there in the beginning, then definitely he was present after that. So God being there at the beginning is an indicator to us that at the beginning of everything, God needs to be there. He needs to be there at the beginning of our day. He needs to be there at the beginning of our thoughts. He needs to be there at the beginning of anything that we're gonna do, our actions. In the beginning, he needs to be there. And he actually makes this pretty clear in Exodus chapter 20, which is the 10 commandments. Verse three says, thou shalt have no other God before me. So I am to be number one, top, beginning. Right, so the first thing that we need to do and think about as we interact with this God is that he is the beginning. And so we begin everything with him. And that's how we can interact with him. Another point that I want us to look at is the beginning of the earth. So the Bible tells us that the earth was void and without form. So the earth existed, but it was void. There was nothing to it. It, it just simply existed. And in a way, not completely, this, this, uh, sim the similarities are not so complete, but in a way, you know, when we are first formed in our mother's womb and, you know, when we're first born, we're kind of like the earth was, in a way. We don't yet know who we are. We don't even know what our names are. In some cultures, they don't even name you until the eighth day, so you go eight full days without even, you know, knowing your name. Well officially. You don't know who you are. You don't know whose you are. You don't know what is inside of you and what you're capable of. All of those things are things that you learn over time. And just like the earth was formed over time, there's this time element and this time factor that reveals those things. And the earth came into being by the spoken word of God. And in the same way, the earth got its name. In the same way, the earth began to bear fruit and all those things. It was by the spoken word of God. In the same way, we get our identity. We get our names. We get what we're capable of, our fruitfulness, by God's word, his word reveals all of those things about us to us and in those ways we are similar to the earth. The third point says the Spirit of God hovered or moved over the face of the waters. Remember we're talking about the beginning here. So the Spirit of God is with God in the beginning hovering over the waters. 
This is before the earth has even taken form yet. So that lets us know that we too have the spirit of God that moves over us, that moves, you know, that is with us and that moves over us. And so we have access to the spirit at all times. And the spirit of God can lead us and guide us and direct us. But we have full access to God's spirit. And in fact, God's spirit moves over us. And so, um, that's another way that we can kind of begin to identify how, how do we relate with this God that we know is real? Well, his spirit is there and available and accessible to us because he's moving all over the place. The last point that I'm going to talk about is light. God creates light because when the earth is formed initially, there's darkness everywhere. But then God creates light. Light is illumination. Light is understanding. Light is knowledge. Light is health. So God gives us light, physical light, which we talked about, right? The sun, the moon, the stars. He gives us those physical attributes of the earth that literally give us light. But he also gives us the light of God through his word. And we can, so when we jump into his word, when we study his word, then his light shines in us and on us and around us. And it helps us to become who we are. And it helps us to determine what we need to do. It helps us to make decisions, good decisions, and all of those things. And so these are just a few examples, and we're, we're gonna go even deeper into this probably in our next video. But I just wanted to cover a couple of things that I think are so important and so critical. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I feel impressed to pray, so let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for, for this time of sharing and for this time of study and for this time with you. I pray, Lord, that you would you would enter into our hearts and enter into our minds and illuminate our thinking because your thoughts are higher than ours. So shine your light so that we can have access to your thoughts and your ways, Lord. And show us your word and lead us every day. We thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So that's it, guys. If you haven't already, Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section once again, and share the video if it's a blessing. Until next time, guys, see ya.